Wireshark is an excellent tool if you're looking at what traffic has exited and entered your computer or has transited past it, but what happens if you want to look at what application is responsible for ne making a particular network connection? Well, this is where you have to look further back from Wireshark, looking further back at the operating system rather than what is going out on the wire, which is what Wireshark will do. In order to gain that information, I'll be looking at a program called Netstat. Now, this tutorial applies to Linux and Unix-based operating systems, although the command Netstat does exist in Windows, it is slightly different functionality. For Ubuntu and Debian-based distributions, I can get the application by typing in sudo apt install net-tools. Well, it is quite a small application that its full install size is less than one megabyte. The usage of Netstat, well, it has to be run with elevated privileges, that is sudo in this case for me in Ubuntu. And simply running the command actually gives us far too much information because it's not just looking at network applications, but rather all open applications in the system which is sort of quite a lot here. There's sort of quite a lot going on in terms of just communication within the applications. So need to narrow it down a bit to, let's say, TCP and UDP connections. TCP being the most common protocol in order to download a web page, transfer data across the internet, and UDP being the most common protocol for actually finding out the address or the IP address of a website. sudo netstat tu that will show me in one go what communication is taking place there from my system, but I need to know the PID, process ID, or a particular application responsible. So add the argument P. And there we have a one-shot look at the list of applications here that are communicating. Now it has tried resolving the IP address there. There are options to disable that feature. Looking at the man page, I can see it is dash "-n", show numerical addresses instead of trying to determine the symbolic host, port, or usernames. And there we go, we have an IP address instead. Okay, for one-shot use, this is adequate, but what happens if I don't know the exact time a communication takes place? Well, I need to watch the command running, using the command watch. And watch continuously runs the command over and over again. So I'll type in watch-n 0.5, so this command is going to be run at every 0.5 second intervals. And the command being run is sudo netstat-tupn. Now we can see the time ticking over in the top right hand side, and this will keep a continuous eye on what communication is taking place. So let's make something happen. And what better way to do that than to go on the internet and make something happen? So if I go to a website, we'll now see the communication taking place. Although that may be a bit vague here because we are looking at IP addresses. So I press Ctrl-C to cancel out the command, or end the command. Let's take off the numeric resolution. Now you can get an idea of, um, yeah, it's still kind of gibberish, but yeah, I was on the BBC website. Let's click on another page, and yeah, sure enough, you'll see more communication taking place. So I'm using my second monitor, which you can't actually see in this video. If I close Firefox, you'll see that process ID disappear. Opening up another application like Discover Software Center, we can again see communication has taken place, and we now have we have a different process ID and the name of the application. This can be quite a useful command in showing what is actually running on your system, what is actually making an internet connection, and who knows, you maybe you might come across some surprises. One final usage of the command I'll show you is outputting the data to a file, because we may want an audit trail of what has happened. I'll create a new file under the temp folder called temp.log. I'll go back to the command I had typed earlier and put in a quote, and then at the end put space pipe t a slash temp slash temp.log. So I'm just going to do a couple of things just to create a bit of log data. I'll just go and close everything off, so Control c and take a look through it. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. So that was how to look at which application is responsible for a certain network communication. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.